still have a history of the jewel in the crown down here. Uh, it's 133 square kilometres of water. Uh, it's really central to everything in, in Mandra, but it's bigger than just Mandra, it's the whole Peel region. We have the rivers that feed into the estuary that flow through the, the Peel region. I like to think of the, the estuary and the streams as being the lifeblood of our community. And uh, the streams and rivers are the arteries and the estuary is really the, the heart of the whole community. The black broom is a really iconic species for the estuary. Black broom actually live their whole life cycle in the estuary they were born in. So with the Murray River flowing into the Peel Inlet and the Peel Harvey Estuary, those black broom that were spawned in the Murray River will spend their whole lifetime in that system, in the Peel Harvey system. Black broom are a big part of the food chain. They are food for a lot of different animals and they also eat a lot of animals. So getting rid of one thing kind of throws it all off. Dolphins can't eat them and then the black brim don't eat the protophers and the artemia and we eat them too. So black brim are really important ecologically. They play a huge part in the food chain and they're also really important recreationally. The, the most targeted fish species in our estuaries in southwestern Australia. Black brim stocks in the Murray River are actually in quite a bad state. We've got scientific evidence that shows that the recruitment of brim, that's where they go from a juvenile brim, from baby brim into an adulthood, has been really poor every year since 2010. So to put that another way, the adult brim that we catch in the Murray River or in the estuary in, in total uh, at the moment, there's a very good chance that those brim were actually born in 2010 or before. Estuaries in southwestern Australia in general have become degraded over the last 25 years or so. In the catchment of the Murray, for example, we've had a decline in rainfall of about 10%, but this is equated to a decline in freshwater discharge by up to 70%, uh, which means the flushing of the organic material and nutrients that build up uh, don't get flushed out properly. We have problems with oxygen conditions, uh, which lead to poor recruitment and growth of fish such as black brim. So the implications of that are that uh, if something happens, if there's a major upheaval or a major fish kill in the, in the estuary or the, or the Murray River itself, we lose that brood stock and we can actually lose the species out of the system. The stock enhancement of black brim in the Murray River is a really important project for us. So we're taking local brim that are caught in the estuary, breeding them, growing them out from eggs to small fingerlings where they're about three centimetres or so, a few months old, and then at that stage putting them back into the system where they're big enough not necessarily to look after themselves but at least can swim away from threats like poor water quality events where you have low oxygen in the water. So today we've come down to catch some black brim for an aquaculture program that we, we're working with together with uh, John Tonkin College in Mandra. Today we hope to catch um, at least a dozen black brim which we'll use for brood stock, so that's for breeding, uh, the production of um, the eggs and larvae which John Tonkin will then grow out for release when they're juveniles. Black brim are a really, really important species in our estuary. They're really valued, they're iconic of the estuary, they live their whole life cycle in the estuary. Black brim are really important ecologically, but they're also the most important recreational fish species in our estuaries. We have commercial fishers that operate in the estuary, uh, and we also have it's a really important recreational fishery as well. The recreational and commercial fishery have been certified as sustainable by the Marine Stewardship Council. So it's a third party certification. I've always been a very keen, enthusiastic recreational fisher and always interested in recreational fishing in estuaries, particularly because it provides a very safe environment for junior anglers. So largely in the, the Swan River estuary, a lot of anglers were catching a lot of small fish rather than the larger fish. So in that particular estuary, we've seen a massive decline in the growth rate of black brim. In the 90s, it took about two and a half years to reach 250 millimetres, which is a legal size, it now takes about seven years. And we've seen that throughout all the estuaries that we've studied, that we've got historical data for in southwestern Australia. So we're using the traditional recreational fishing gear. Um, we've got a small sinker and we've got a, a circle hook. That prevents the fish being deep hooked and these hooks tend to sit right in the lips so they're easy to remove and they, they harm the fish less. 
Ideally, uh, we catch a few fish, we put them in the esky with an aerator, and then we take them back to Murdoch while they're still nice and healthy. We catch our broodstock from the Peel Harvey estuary. That's so that we maintain genetic diversity and we don't mix genetics up between stocks because each stock is genetically distinct. We then take those broodstock back to Murdoch University where they're put in the aquaculture system. We condition them up over three or four weeks, uh, make them nice and healthy. Then we induce them to spawn and we use those eggs and sperm to produce larvae uh, for John Tonkin College, which they then grow out to juveniles for release. They bring them over here and then we feed them, make them grow a bit bigger so that when we do release them they can actually survive and not just be killed and eaten by everything else in the river. In order to make the project as successful as possible we had to learn all the natural habitats in the river that a fish would live in. So like the salinity, how much salt we need to put in, how much oxygen they need to have especially and the kind of temperatures they needed. With this, we're measuring the deoxygenated levels and the pH levels of this from the filter that's connected to all of these tanks, which is um, collecting the excrement and the excess food. It's important because the levels of ammonia caused from the excess can actually harm the, the stuff living inside the tanks. So we have to make sure that it's treated well, otherwise it'll all fail. One of the places where we lose a lot of brim, or one of the, the life cycles where we lose a lot of brim, is at that really early larval stage where the brim are too small to swim away. They're actually just eggs that float around on the tides. They move around where the water pushes them to. If there's a, a poor water quality event, which we often get in the lower sections of the Murray and Serpentine rivers, then those eggs or those larval forms of the fish are in trouble. So with my part that I did in the pilot project, I was mainly with the rotifers and we'd breed and grow the algae to feed to the rotifers. And once the rotifers grew, we fed them to the smaller brim, like the baby brim. But once the brim had grown up and were medium sized, we fed them Artemia. We're attached to our plankton, you know, our phytoplankton and our zooplankton. And we just sort of look down the microscope and, you know, see what our population is. And then we go out and we drag a net and we check out the, the plankton and yeah, they're, they're organisms, and, but you know, we love our fish. <laughs> we released 2,300 last year. Um, we're hoping to do that, you know, about 5,000 a year so that we can increase the survival rate of our brim. And we've also stained them. Black brim are, are a species of fish that are called teleos. Teleos fish all, all have the same feature in that they have these little stones in their head called otoliths. As the fish gets older, if you catch a fish and remove the stone out of its head and slice the stone in half, you can count the rings in it and figure out how old it is, much the same way that you can with the tree with its rings. All of the fish that we've aquacultured, we actually, just before release, swim through a dye that stains the, stone, the otolith in the fish's head. As the fish gets older, that stain's retained. So if we catch a fish five or six years after it's been released and remove its otolith and section it to have a look at it, we actually tell whether or not that fish was it aquacultured fish or whether it was one of the wild stock? So it gives us some sort of way of measuring the success of our, um, of our stock enhancement project. So hopefully in 10 years time when people are catching brim, they'll return the otoliths and we'll find that our fish that we grew, you know, they're catching them in the Murray River. It was very fun and interesting throughout the whole project, especially when we finally released the fish taking kids out on country, out into the estuary so they can see what the issues are, being involved in research with the researchers and they get passionate as I am about their environment, about our little fish growing in our tanks and that they want to see them succeed and grow and then they're, they're part of something bigger. So they're our aquaculturalists, they're the ones that are growing the fish, putting them into the river, at the same time learning how fragile that ecosystem is and how important it is to maintain a habitat for the brim so that they can carry on to catch fish into future generations. So that's really probably the most important part of the, the exercise. Really important scientifically that we try to bolster the stocks of the brim by doing this stock enhancement, but the major part of the project is really getting that community engagement and that buy-in and bringing the community along for the ride, understanding how important it is that we maintain the river in, in a good state for, for fish. So this project has really helped me learn 
and like understand the knowledge better because I was actually able to be hands on and actually take action in what I was doing, not just sit in a classroom and read out of textbooks. So that's really helped me become a better student. It was nice to know that I could do something to help the place that I loved instead of just sitting by and doing nothing. I didn't really think that I would be able to help in all honesty, but it's, it's nice to know that I can because of where I am now.